Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Kopi Cafe, episode number 62. My name's Rob Gregg, co-CEO of Cornucopius, and today, as always, I'm joined by Josh Jones, the other co-CEO of Cornucopius. Cornucopius is an MMORPG metaverse game that will be accessible through multiple platforms. Created on Unreal Engine 5, we build all our own AAA assets and graphics in-house. Um, the metaverse is... It's a network of floating bubbles and domes which give diverse themes and characteristics. Um, and today, I think we're going to be talking about some game news, um, some testing strategy. We're going to talk a little, little bit of presentation on graphics cards. Josh is going to talk about marketing strategy, maybe some talk about conferences. We have a special guest from the community, an OG member. And then we have a leak at the end. But before we do all of that, Josh, what are you drinking and where are you? Because it looks a little bit uh, like you drinking that. <laughs> I'm in a shack, man. Um, well, I, shack. I am. Uh, yeah, well, no, no. Uh, I, I am in a apartment that's getting remodeled and it's the area uh, on my um, family's property because I'm in Maine right now. So I'm not at my regular house and okay. it's the area where we have the best Wi-Fi. So you get the background. We're being real with you guys. This is just another ex uh, example of transparency. It's really hot in here too, by the way, but it's got the best <laughs> Wi-Fi. So all of this for you guys. And the answer to what I'm drinking is a very fine beverage made by a doctor. Oh. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Diet Dr. Pepper. Pepper. Well, I am sure mine is made by a doctor. Birdies. Dark fruits. Refocus, it says on there. Yeah, did you see? Yeah, it was out of focus. And now look, it's in focus. <laughs> Very clever. Some... We don't just throw this together. I, I have no idea where it is. It's not a cider or anything. I think it's um, dark fruits with guana. Yeah, there yeah. There we go. Sure. For sure. Um, Garana, you know, can you tell me what that does for you? Is that what helps you with the refocus? It gives you wings. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's Red Bull, man. You're mixing your, you're mixing your slogans. Okay. Hold on. If this odd, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and shut the window. So there's no breeze. If I start sweating profusely, <laughs> it's, it's also for you. I'm eliminating the, uh, no worries. neighborhood audio a little bit. Okay. So yeah. Rob, great intro. You're really, you say you weren't prepared. I enjoyed the intro. I like it. Good job. What's, what's next? What are we talking about? So a little bit of game news. The racing game is, is obviously coming along very well. We're testing internally. We're actually thinking of, because we're developing on, on Unreal Engine 511. Maybe maybe we're going to get some performance boosts if, if we if we push it up to to five point two. So we're we're in in the middle of testing, deciding whether we we want to to go with testing in its current version or whether we upgrade. So it's it's a we we're not quite decided yet. Um, but the bit in the front of it um, is obviously the Calido Resort. That's going well. That went into public testing. We've got two servers at the moment, one in America and one in Europe. And I suppose we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. We've got a couple of conferences coming up, so we don't really want to do any major changes to, to literally break things and you know to, to risk what we've got showing at, at those conferences. So, yeah. So, um, but in terms of testing strategy, we have, we launched, obviously we launched with, um, a number of, of OGs, um, they did NDAs. They've been split into multiple different groups. Um, we started off with with kind of like the high-end graphics card, the NVIDIA 40 series and, and the, the, um, the, the Ryzen 7s. Um, so we started with, with two testers, as, as you've seen. We, we, we had um, Scruffy in there and we had Crypto Crow, more influencers. We opened it up to 10, then we quickly opened it up to 27, and we think we've just released another 50 or 60-odd with, with more cards, a 30. So we're opening it up really quickly. So we're, we're, about, we're about 120 testers at the moment. 
Um, and I think we might pause for for a little while and get and get some feedback on on those those cards because we've got some thirty cards and and some twenties in there. So although we opened it up really fast, we need to do some some other testing in there. Um, I think it's also what, I, what I've noticed is is I think we have to set expectations a little bit because. A, a lot of the people, community have seen them opening up and they've seen us testing and doing streaming and they think we have the full game ready that we're, we're still in test mode so although we we you know the members are in here having fun and running around they are still testing the game um we don't know currently um how many players we can get into into, into one server where we know eventually it'll be somewhere between 50 and 150 but we're not looking at stress testing these servers at all at the moment none of it has been tuned up we're just looking at, at doing kind of smoke testing and getting some other measurements out of it so well you how yeah. many did you have how many did we have at max first of all let me let me add this and then i want i want you to go to that question i missed probably one of the most critical weeks of our company uh, and of yeah. our project. And that was just due to timing. And, uh, you know, it was a family trip that I had last week and I had to I had to miss last week, which was so hard. I would get up and work every morning early uh, yeah. and see a little bit of what was going on. But man, what a week. Like that was a tremendous success for Cornucopius. We have um, how many testing right now? Just over a hundred, so it's about one hundred and twenty. But they're not simultaneous. Just over one hundred and twenty that have testing access. Yeah, that's a remarkable start. Crazy. It's going incredibly well. Yeah, most of the bugs have been resolved. There's a, a new wave of bugs being created, but we've mm -hmm. got it's it's running really well. This is a huge success, and we're still massively flying under the w radar. Um, like yeah. the the the. What we have launched at this point is so astounding and amazing and beautiful. And you'll hear from one of our guests later in this episode what his thoughts are on what we've done so far. Um, again, this isn't a Web 2 scenario where we wait until the very end and launch the full game. It's This is we're being transparent with our community, Web 3 style, Kopi Cafe every week, letting you guys know exactly where we're at and releasing it gradually over time. So that means we've released something that's not fully developed, clearly. But yep. um, I think we, I mean, it's something to celebrate. Cheers. We, we, you guys did a great job last week. We launched something Definitely. amazing. And um, so I, I just wanted to say that, like, this is a celebration we are in a whole new sphere of our, our development process now that I'll talk a little bit about on that marketing announcement that we have, but, um, yep. or, you know, the marketing strategy when we get there. Okay. I just wanted to say that I wanted to celebrate that good job last week to, to you, to all of our team. Um, that was, that was amazing to watch. I had family watching. I got a couple of my nephews playing and they yeah. loved it. They absolutely loved getting in there. They have a whole slew of ideas and kids perspectives. So I, I want to get a kids testing group going at some point as well. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, back to the original question I was asking you, how many stress test wise, what, what was the most we've had in there at one time well, so far? If I look at the rollout plan, we should be up to eight people at the moment. That's what we've got on our plan. Um, we, we, we should just be about opening up to 16 people. So that the fact that we've got just on just about 120 people, you know, we, we've really shot forward because the game so far ha has been quite stable. Um, we're noticing that the, the European server is seems to be a, li a little bit more janky, shall we say, than the American one. But that, that's just, you know, these are not going to be the final servers. These are just test servers. But, um, yeah, we're, we we were running around the other day, and I think it was about 18 people. Um, but we've not done a call to arms yet. We've not said, look, we want 50 people. We're going to test at this particular time. We've just let it naturally flow. And actually, nearly every night this week, I've looked in, in, in the um, – the the OG channel and they've been playing and chatting and I've been saying look let's go over to general because the, the general in general chat they don't know 
how how well things are going so we've actually done a couple of streams there as well as we, as we know scruffy has, has done a, an actual live stream our first ever live stream yeah. which yeah. which was incredible um paul a cardano with paul he did he did a, a video shoot for about half an hour we've had a couple of other influencers that have done videos i don't know when they're they're due to be released um yeah we didn't expect to as everything we didn't expect to be where we are now maybe five or six weeks down the line we seem to have done this within a week so at some point we have to kind of slow down and not get too carried away because we let too many people in then we can't do the test that, that that we've got planned but yeah testing is going extremely well um one of the strategies i think what what we wanted to do is we didn't just want to have testers go in there for a couple of hours. We want we kind of wanted an incentive for them to, to stick around, which is why we, we introduced the, the holocaches. So you can go around and, and um, collect these these hundred holocaches as, you, as you're walking around, kind, kind of like a, a collection game, um, and introduce some elements of puzzle um, and, and escape rooms, which, which we're, we're going to build on in the future. However, again, that that strategy of gamifying the testing, I think is one of the reasons why it's so popular and why the, the community is in there nearly every evening when they come home from work because it is literally going really well. And we're finding that Kalido Valley in itself, remember what it was, was kind of like a metaverse big lobby for the, for the racing game. It's actually going to be... Um, I think a, a really successful different type of genre of, of gameplay. So, so we obviously have the racing game. We, we, we have um, Solace and the theme zones, which, which, which is the MMO RPG game. Um, and we also have Kalido Valley, w which set out to, to be kind of like um, this, this web two metaverse um, communal area. But now that we've gamified it and, and the escape rooms and the holocaches are working really well, we can actually implement uh, um, another part of that, which which we had planned down the line. But I think that's going to be incredible. We're going we're to add some more escape rooms into there, and we will be um, showcasing them in the, in the next few weeks when, when people actually come come down to, um, to to Vegas and to Denver and get their hands on the game. So... So yeah, yeah. Every, as usual, everything's a hundred miles an hour, but it's working. Yeah, and the holocaches, that was a quick solution to mm. gamify the Kalido outer area. But that's never it's never like we set out to do something quick and we don't have a more full, complete vision for that. That is no. the beginning of interactions in our mm -hmm. game. And when yeah. we add inventory to that to flesh out the vision for the hollow caches, we might have it where, you know, what I wanted to do was bring in a pickaxe or bring in a hmm. something that can be effective in another one of the domes. Yeah. So it causes you to go interact elsewhere as well. There's just a variety of things that we can do. So it's the beginning of the interaction system when you, as a player, get so close to this object, this occurs, and what the pop-up is could be totally different. It could yeah. be, hey, this is a tool. Would you like to store it in your inventory? Or this is, you know, whatever. Um, this is points that you can use for X, Y, Z. Uh, this is a key that can get you into these gates that's a private area or whatever it may be. There's just a lot we can do there. Again, it's the beginning of the interaction system, but it's also when we add inventory, it can be the beginning of uh, yeah. hunter-gatherer type game uh, logic, which is definitely something that we plan to have for Solace. So we get yeah. to start testing that here in Kalido. Just no, another you're, area. You're right, because it actually pairs up to the compass that, that we have at the top of the screen. So the compass mm -hmm. is the, is part of really core functionality that you will find in in um, in Solace. As you're wandering around, the compass will kind of be one of the, your many guides. So, so yeah, we, we had to introduce the holocache to introduce the compass and the holocache just yeah it just seems to it, it just seems to be on fire it, it, it's gone down really really well which which i'm yeah i'm really pleased about um yeah agreed so yeah so 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 moving moving along then i have um i thought what we what we could do is we could spend a, 
a short amount of time. I want to go through this pretty quickly um, and talk about graphics cards because I know there's there's been a lot of talk of, of people getting different kinds of graphics cards, and I, I just want to almost like have a little bit of an education of 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 some of them. And, and I know there's hundreds of different types of, of cards. And, you know, I'm going to pick on the two kind of big boys, which is NVIDIA and, and AMD. And I'm really going to pick on some of their newer cards just, just to kind of explain um, what the numbers mean when, when you're looking at them. Because you can get a 40 series, for example. If, if we look at um, NVIDIA, they have a 40 series, a 30, a 20, and a 10. And that big number really tells you what what generation of card that is. So, so the forty cards really is twenty two, kind of twenty three, and and then the 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 higher than the card, the newer the card. So, and, and it's the same with AMD. They actually have the the single digit at the first. So they have the seven thousand series and the six thousand series. Now, within those cards, they actually have another number after them. So they ha so Nvidia has ninety, eighty, seventy, sixty, and and so on. And actually, the higher than the the card, the greater the performance. So this means that a forty, say a forty sixty, for example, is not actually as powerful as a thirty eighty. And so, so, you, so you have to be be careful when you're looking at them. You so they're, they're in different performance rankings. Um, and then to confuse it, they have all these extra options in the end, like a, a TI and an XT and an XTX if it's AMD. Um, but if I if I go through the the next slide, for example, <clears throat> if we look at these, the, this is kind of a good way of, of looking at them and ranking them. So so well, look, the can four I interject with a question then, real quick? Yeah, yeah. So that if if I'm you know putting myself in the user's shoes. I'm going, mm -hmm. well, then why don't I go if if a 4060, you said, is not as powerful as a 3080. Yeah. Um, then my logic would say, why don't I go down to the 10 series and get a 1080 uh, instead? So what am I sacrificing by going down to the older 10 series? What do I lose? Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, will, you will get age. So over time um cards of obviously have a little bit of wear and tear uh, but but mainly as new generations of cards come out you you will find that they have more um vram on on them and they'll have more transistors and more processors so so they are getting more and more powerful the the lower numbers to previous generations but if if the 30 and the 40 because they're only a couple of years close to each other you, you you will see really the difference when you look at the price you'll look at a 40 a 40 um 60 for example and you might see a 30 80 ti look at the prices and think well why, why are they similar or, or why is the older card more expensive and it'll be because of the performance of them so okay our our game, what we tested so far with with our very limited set, is performing extremely well with all the forty cards, um, and it's it's working very well as well with all the thirty cards that that we have at the moment. Um, but we, like I say, we have a very very small set, and the the final thing, kind of what I wanted to talk about is. There's some marketing trickery that goes on between the, the manufacturers as well. So what we have here is we have the the very latest card from the video, which is the 4090. And you can get a 4090 in a laptop or you can get the 4090 in a desktop. And at face value, you're thinking you're getting the same card. But if you actually look under the hood, you'll see that the desktop version of the card is actually a lot more powerful, up, up to 50% more powerful. Um, so so the laptop version actually is is less performant. And it kind of makes sense because the graphics, the graphics card for desktop is a lot bigger. The fans are, are bigger. It gets more power into it. The laptop really is designed for short bursts um, and, and it's there for cooling. Um, but yeah, if just just be aware that but getting a 4090 desktop is not the same at all um, as the 
as the laptop version. However, you know, some of these modern modern laptops, the, the, they perform really, really well. But the and they have dual purpose as well, because as well as as you know gaming on a laptop, you can also cook your breakfast on them. So you, you know you can quite happily have egg and bacon on these laptops because they get to as hot as an oven. They're, they're absolutely <laughs> uh, you know pro- proper hot. But I just well, yeah, I was playing our, our game on laptop last night when we were in there streaming together, and uh, yeah, that's it got hot. I had to yeah, I had to move hot. it off of my legs. Yeah. But yeah, I think- uh, it did. It was a, you know, on the laptop, I, I had a great experience. Now, I definitely have the best experience on my uh, home desktop, without yeah. a doubt. But I did have a great experience on the laptop. I had fun. It was it was great getting in there. So, yeah, I just find find when you put your desktop, it's a lot heavier when you put it on your lap. You know, a laptop's a little bit lighter, but it's, it's a bit hotter. But yeah, it's pretty rare that I put my desktop on my lap. But yeah, uh, or your yeah. laptop on your desk. But, you, but I mean. No, wait, scratch that reverse. Yeah, let's 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 do that again. But um Cut. yeah, let's move on. Anyway, so um so the next subject we wanted to talk about was the marketing strategy. And um, I will definitely leave that to you. Sure. Um so you know what I wanted to cover with everybody is just to give you guys a heads up on you know what our marketing strategy all along has been, uh which some of you know, um, but uh anybody that's new to us, our strategy has been and also with why we do Kopi Cafe weekly, let's be transparent with our community and show them what we're building all along. That's been our strategy. Can we add to that and will we add to that? Yes, when the time is right. Uh, right now, what we're adding to that is we have roles and the ability to release new content to an influencer group of player accounts that have access to the desktop launcher. So what we're currently doing is we're giving access to some influencers to do things like what you saw Rob do with Cardano with Paul. For example, we will grow that group of influencers that has special access over time. So ideally, when we fast forward to a year from now, maybe we have a thousand influencers that are on an email list that we have based upon our role system that's already set up and we can email them and say, Uh, you have access to new content in our system, whether it's a new NFT sale or whether it's new uh, section of the game or whatever it may be, we're growing our reach. Eventually, we'll start targeting Web 2 influencers. We're not ready for that yet, but Web 3 influencers is currently where we are. Um, We'll get Web 2 influencers naturally by the nature of our signal and the amount of people that are already following us and what we're doing but I don't want to target that yet because yep. we want the game to get quite a bit further along because the paradigm in web two is, Hey, you got to be really finished and polished up and, you know, a full fledged game with full gameplay and all of that before you launch. We're not taking that strategy. We're saying here, we're going to develop this and involve you guys, our community. And we're going to try to make it as fun as we can for you all along the way. Hence the hollow cash. But, we are going to reveal and open new content systematically over time. And now that we have this major area launched, we got the desktop launcher working well. We've got the player admin working well, uh, then player accounts, and we've got the game launched. The cool thing is now we, we do bug fixes on a weekly basis. We batch those out and we'll show you patch notes in our desktop launcher, but we get to gradually reveal new content once a month, maybe that is our cadence. Once a month, you see a lot of really new, cool stuff coming from us. So the pace of seeing new stuff should increase. And that's part of our marketing strategy as well. We want to build up our teams with uh, a few more experts in their fields to increase our pace of production and really prepare for this next bull cycle but also just really prepare to launch these other areas of the game that we need to launch like Solace, uh, Esperanza, and get the the land play going. So what you guys should see from us is a pretty consistent new content that we're uh, gradually releasing to influencers over time and growing that influencer and media company uh, database so that we've got easy at a flick of a finger, we've got new content getting out there which is amazing. That's an incredibly powerful tool that we've built into our admin. 
huge. We literally get to tick a box and say, this this group of uh, influencers, we got a, a group right now of about 25 influencers, it's set up in our, in our admin. Yep. We can literally take a new area of the game and check that for what they have access to. And only they have access for that to that for two weeks before we release it to the community. Think about how powerful that is. That's a really great tool. So very excited about that. In terms of uh, adding fuel to that fire and amplifying just, so for me, number one, consistently showing our community what we're building holds us accountable to keeping our team in great shape yeah. and doing a good job of delivering, right? So that's powerful in and of itself. It shows the community that we are building, 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 huge. But now I wanna take that signal with the influencers and that role system that we talked about. And when we're comfortable that the sentiment on the game is high and our revenue from in-game assets and things like that is exceeding our infrastructure cost on the game, like AWS hosting, game lift hosting, things like that. When we're comfortable with those two things, then we, we bring on a PR group as well to get you and I on uh, more thought leadership type interviews with large media groups and uh, mm -hmm. really amplify our signal to all of crypto and then even eventually more of web two. So that in terms of a marketing strategy, uh, I think is gonna be very powerful for us. And uh, we are, we're, we're really just getting going with that just as we are just getting going with, and I don't wanna leave out the one final element, you guys, our community, as we allow mm -hmm. you to start sharing video content that alone is a powerful signal as well. So the more of you we can get playing and sharing quality content, the better. So in the future on Kopi Cafe, be looking for some lessons from us on what we use to screen record at high quality so that you guys can grab that and it's free software and use that yourself to uh, share content. All right, that's my rant on marketing strategy. It's pretty basic, uh, but the reality is, we haven't done much on marketing because it's not time. And when, yeah, when it's think, time, think, we're going to really fuel that up. Like you say, it, while we're in early access, it will be organic. And then when we get to alpha and definitely in beta phase, then, yeah, we, we, we will be we, – those marketing companies will, will be going absolutely crazy. But, um, okay. And they're going to love us the agency that we work with because there's going to be so much visual content that they have access to our yeah. visual library is massively increasing now so all right go ahead yeah yeah i i actually just remembered what we've some um, um findings at the moment with testing is for the graphics cards we will have we have increased the the minimum vram of the graphics card to six gigabytes so in the future, you will be able to play the game with whatever graphics card you've got. But while we're doing testing, we're going to um, limit that to a minimum of, of six gigabytes on, on the graphics card. Um, okay. We've not looked at tuning up the, the lower cards at all yet. So um, so we won't be looking at the 10 cards, for for example, for, for, um, for a, probably quite a while. But then the testing strategy is also OGs, and then we'll move it over to the Mythic Land and Vehicle Holders, then the rare, legendary music hold, yeah, the yeah. rare, the uncommon and common. Okay, yep. yeah. So next, actually, we have um, a member of the community. He he's. Oh wait, did we before we go there? Do we want to say anything about conferences? So, um, ah. just that we have Rare Evo and um, and mm -hmm. NFTLV coming up. We will be there. Uh, I am now going to Rare Evo, which is exciting. That was a last minute. Uh, decision we got in there but yeah we'll be at rare evo we'll be at cn uh, nft lv they rebranded from cnft con um and uh i think we're gonna have a really solid presence at both we got some exciting stuff to show you at both of them we talked about it a little bit today i can't say any more about it but yep. it will be new things that uh anybody that's at those events will get to see before anyone else other, other than the fact that we will be streaming and posting about it as well so they'll just get to see it live and in person <clears throat> yeah, gonna be two fun. weeks. Two weeks, roughly around two weeks from now, people will be playing Cornucopius live. No pressure to our dev team. All right. Yeah, and Josh and I will be there. To, you know, to 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 egg you on. 
Okay, yep. so yes. So our, our next section then, we actually have a guest from the community. And in the past, we've had, um, we, we have had Scruffy on um, an OG, but we've never actually had a, a, an OG non-influencer. So we would like to welcome on board um, Simba. Hello, Simba. Hello there. Ooh, hey. That's my line. Hey. Welcome. Welcome to Kopi Cafe, sir. Thank you. I'm very, very honored to, to be here. Good, good. What are you good drinking to today, Simba? Oh, my drink. Uh, well, uh, it's Thursday, so I am actually only have uh, Coca-Cola syrup today. Syrup. Very nice. Yep. Very nice. So why do we have you here? Let, let's let's um, let's tell everyone why we're here. We, we have obviously this this hollow cash collecting game, and you were the first person actually to collect all one hundred of them. Um, there was a few people on your tail, and, and I think I was about to catch you, and then it egged you on. But um, congratulations! Your prize you. is to um, yeah your fifteen minute of fame. Is is to come on to Kopi Cafe and, and tell us all about it. How did you, how did you do it? What did you think? What do you think of testing so far? Well, we can start with uh, uh, what I think about the favorite part of the game. Uh, uh, when I entered uh, the game first day, uh, I just was was blown away. Uh, the the artwork uh, um, it's truly amazing. And uh, it's I need to give uh, uh, your team of, at the art uh, uh, a big applause uh, because it's really really hard to, to describe, uh, describe the the quality of the art and see through all the streams uh, that have been uh, lately and you you need really need to to uh, play the game by yourself and yeah, yeah see it. It's really, really nice. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's no ordinary early access, is it? I mean, no. it's, it's, you, you start off in the World Breaker um, yeah. and you're introduced by Tess. Yeah. So Tess is, Tess is this, this little robot that introduces you to the game. Um, and then you go out into the world. It's multiplayer. I, I think, how many people have you played with? You must have played with... Um... I was a part of a group with 17 people. Wow, yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah most, again, uh, that's, that's like week one. We, we did a quick yeah, update. Yeah. And um, yeah, how long did it take you then to, to, to find these? Well, uh, at first, the first four hours, uh, we just wandered uh, around to look uh, on all the artwork and, and uh, the details and just be so amazed uh, but then I started to to find bugs uh, as we should do uh, as testers uh, and report those uh, find uh, a few hollows uh, try the burger ones the, the tricky one uh, and when we got when I got up to about 95 hollows uh, <laughs> it was actually you Rob who triggered me to to uh, get to uh, 100. Uh, but the funny was uh, the, that all my five uh, holes was at the start um, when you joined the server. Uh, and I think that was uh, because of uh, everything was new. Uh, yeah. you, you you got like a tunnel uh, uh, to see through. You, you didn't pay attention to, to the holes at all. And uh, probably the, why I missed it. So... I got the last one, and as uh, many of uh, uh, the community saw, uh, we, I um, uh, put up an image in the general chat, chat, chat and it yeah, was we, a mythic uh, we holo. Were we, were there. Yeah. We, we were there watching. Pretty cool. Guy. I think what you, you definitely don't, st on the stream, it's not the same as, as when you're actually in no. there. No. And, it may look like um, the resort is quite small. Yeah, so so big. Oh my god. Um, so 
that's the thing also when you have i've been in the game now over 40 hours or more 40 hours, in, in, yeah. i probably have been there 50 60 hours anyway yeah. um we'll send you the then bill you start for, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. then you start to think about how little this actually place is uh, uh in the amazing big metaverse that you guys have um started to build and it will be a pretty cool game when every step um comes out to to the public and yeah all the other domes uh yeah, yeah. i mean the, the resort is a fraction of the size yeah. of palace but it's really I, hard I to describe what what i'd like to i suppose on on a on a final question is you know you'd well, like to say you spent, oh sorry josh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, you you ask your question josh okay uh before you go to a final question so uh i that's okay. why i had to interject there so oh. how did you find out about cornucopius and, and how long have you been in the community well, I'm a developer on a uh, pool at Cardano. Uh, so I, I join all all the channels and just uh, follow the, the, the main um, influencer and, and so on. Then I saw uh, something about this uh, Cornucopias game and, uh, and uh, started to follow it, follow it at yeah it's around 2021 um i think at start when you open up oh. the twitter and uh, everything so i really uh, uh, yeah 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 oh gee and uh then i'm uh joined up into the discord and were you a gamer before or is this uh, new you? You well no no I, I, i've always been a gamer i'm a it manager today uh so uh IT is my thing. I like computers. I like games. Uh, I usually play a lot of FPS uh, games. Uh, so um, also FBS strategic. Games. Yeah, yeah. Battlefield, uh, uh, Counter-Strike, uh, and Halo, so on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything like that. And uh, so, so. Um, Very good. Pretty, so, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to check your kind of gaming background and make sure that what you're comparing to, you know, you so, so you really like what your experience is with Cornucopia. Uh, so yeah, game. very few games out there that have this uh, high quality uh, artwork. It's mostly yeah. the artwork. It's so yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's early. So, you know, obviously yeah. gameplay and... Uh, gamification and what you can do in Cornucopius yeah. is going to develop, uh, yeah. I believe, very quickly. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we definitely have uh, led with a really strong, large world of art. Uh, and gosh, there's already so much more. I mean, we got eight kilometers by eight kilometers of uh, yeah. just one Solace Dome uh, built yeah. at this point, and and the start of Solace Two, and also the start of Esperanza. Uh, which is which is pretty cool. So the amount of content to explore in Cornucopius is going to be vast. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just want to get your perspective on that and get a little background mm -hmm. on you. But uh, mm -hmm. Rob, you can now ask your final question. So so ha playing so many hours in in the game um, with the artwork is not just artwork and, and the limited gameplay. It must be that you found some community so you're not playing on your own you can, can you talk about you know how how you're playing i suppose with the community side and and, and if you expected that first off uh, i just have the intent to just to be a tester and and wandering yeah. around the phone find the bugs but as soon as uh, uh we find the other people uh, we start to talk and yeah. Uh, interact a lot more, and uh, you you become um, more like buddies and uh, know more about them and so on. So, so yeah, it's I not mean... about the game itself. Uh, it's the whole thing when you come in and interact with each other. And yeah, I, I mean, I've I that's the bit that's really surprised me is. You know, I thought I'd be going around and, and you know, doing holocaches and doing some testing. 
but it's actually quite addictive to to go in there with, and and these these people that you've spoke to in chat you know yeah. for a few years you're now speaking to them voice um and doing these challenges together and like you said you know you got up to 94 holo caches and then we were all in there and then you were being mm. egged on and encouraged and and then when you achieve those 100 you yeah. know, the community was there celebrating and and now you're turning that into a separate game where you're uh, i think you're doing speed runs to try and do 100 <laughs> yeah uh, speed runs yeah as, as soon as you get to to 100 holo caches then you well you can go back to just test uh, um, all the, the we'll find the bugs uh, and and the right report them and so on or help the other guys to find the ho lost holo caches but i thought i will do something more the most games out there have like uh, uh, speed runs uh especially when we have these holo caches and we have hundreds of them and yeah. i thought that that will be fun to to do so started what? to to count everyone and do a route and do you have uh, a, a time yet for your yeah first... uh, the f first first time was one hour uh, 35 minutes i think uh, <laughs> but that's with my specific route uh, and uh, today what? actually yeah what do you want to get that down to? Uh, I hope, uh, I think I can get to 40 minutes. Uh, I was no. at uh, about 45 minutes uh, yesterday. yesterday. Uh, so a few minutes uh, can I shut off uh, of that time, hopefully. But it's, it's really hard. <laughs> you need to uh, sync all the elevators, uh, everything with... Uh, yeah, the all the way to the trains, metro, uh, sync everything up, and it's hard. Oh, that's interesting. So you yeah. have to, yeah, yeah, I didn't think about that because there's a good amount of waiting time on, on yeah. the elevator to arrive yeah. or the, the air Observation car. tower. <laughs> so we definitely yeah. not, didn't expect you to gamify the gamified game and then turn it into uh -huh. a speed run and then uh -huh. the community. And yeah, and um, actually, I think. This can't, before we do the community questions, Josh, I, I think while Simba's here, it, it's probably a good time to go into the leak. All right. So now it's time to reveal to you guys the leak segment of our, our Kopi Cafe. What on earth is this cave? Yeah, it looks like, um, well, I mean, it's definitely a mine shaft. I guess I should say what under earth is this? Nope, it's not earth. It's a mine shaft. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, it's not in a glimpse of solace, so it's somewhere new that we haven't seen before. But yeah. it might, it's not currently in a glimpse of solace, but it could be used there. We're working on things in development uh, yep. in parallel. So sometimes you might get to see something else that's being offered up uh, and worked on while other bottlenecks are occurring in other uh parts for example racing or uh, solace development or things like that are still in development but this is something that could be used in solace esperanza wherever but yeah go ahead yeah um we've got three familiar characters there actually we've got ace we have maria that's wearing a helmet mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure that's leo with with a mining jacket on and a helmet himself yeah so, so those are all new npcs yeah, good point. Incredible looking rock structures. This is obviously a mine and there is some really cool ways that we'll be able to bring this into the game uh, and make it incredibly fun. Uh, it's something mo more will be shown soon for sure. But this is a I mean, you and I have seen the, the full demo of the mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty big. The, I think with what we're seeing here is, is obviously they've got pickaxes as well and, and various tools. The, there is some, um, there's gold, gold nuggets coming out there. I think that actually is part of a gold vein um, to throw down a, a few more um, nuggets of information. Well, t to me, this is an example of we have resource flow in uh, Cornucopius 
throughout the bubbles. And it's an opportunity for us in making this very metaverse based and having this in-game economy for us to create all sorts of different mini games. For example, fishing is being worked on as well in parallel, you know, and that's going to be a different kind of resource flow. Mining yep. is obviously something that's going to be needed for you to go and build up your land and stuff like that at some point. So whether it's in Solace or outside of Solace, it is relevant to Solace. It is relevant to any of the uh, world that we're building because in all of these, we need to be able to gather resources and exchange goods and, and build things up. So it's a lot of fun in my mind. Yep. We, all, I, we will see that first, obviously, with, with testing in Kalido Valley, no doubt. We, we, will, we will travel somewhere. Yeah, that's a good point. So the Cornucopies Labs is an opportunity for us once we've, we, we've mentioned this multiple times before. It's just a great way for us to easily test other things that are in development and show you guys and debug and get it refined. Uh, so in, in actuality, starting with this racing in Kalido Valley has been such a strong way for us to scale more quickly into the other things that we're offering. So I'm very excited about it and I can't wait for you guys to see more of this because it's it's pretty huge. And, you know, again, this is being done in parallel to racing uh, and to also to building Solace and working on Kalido Valley and debugging. Uh, we have teams spread out working on all sorts of things right now. So very exciting. I'm still amazed when I see that. Uh, so yeah, truly, truly nice work uh, from the art, uh, art yeah. team. Well, it's, yeah. been, it's been great having you on. Um, one, yeah. one of the early OGs, like yeah. you say, from 21, and you're doing a great job testing. And you will see many more secrets in the future. And um, yeah, who knows? We might have you back on again. <laughs> oh, man. Enjoyed it. Thanks for joining the show, Simba. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Josh. So let's move <clears> on then to community questions. Yeah. The, the, the first question we have from the wolf. He wants uh -huh. to know. Um, let's have a look. He says, some of us are looking to upgrade our GPUs, our graphics cards, for, for no reason in particular. Um, how long will it take for us to see feedback on testing that takes place? Um, it would be extremely useful to see if the GPUs that they have their eye on performs well. So I, I think, uh, do you want to answer that, Josh? Do, do you want me to start? Well, with? no, you probably got a better perspective on that with some of what you already talked about with the graphics cards already. Um, yep. So I, I'd say you go with, you run with that. Well, Every time you log into the game, um, you go via the, the launcher. So, so the launcher knows what graphics cards you, you, you've got, whether you've got um, an NVIDIA or an AMD, whether you've got six gig of, of, of um, VRAM or 32 gig. So, so we are, we are uh, looking at these, these configurations and, and the performance, and we will be doing a number of surveys in, in the future um, we'll be collating them all together. So the surveys will be what kind of graphics card have you got? What's your performance? What's your thoughts of the game? Some really high level stuff. Um, and we'll be able to, to accumulate those and, and report back to you. So in a few months from now, we will tell you what, hopefully what, what the performance is like on the, the different 40 series, on the 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, and for the 30 cards and for the 20s. And we remember, we're also doing tests with, with the 10 series as well. We just haven't built the, the low settings yet. So we're constantly doing feedback, and we will we will feed that to you. So so my advice, if you are looking at, at getting a graphics card, or, or maybe you're thinking, is my current graphics card okay? just hold out for a few months um and, and then we will feed back our what our testers are doing and, and remember we we will have hundreds of thousands of people in there so we should have a really good a really good scale um of, of things but if somebody couldn't wait any longer and they wanted to buy right now what's the minimum you would suggest I don't like putting people on the spot. I, I think the 3080 or especially the 3080 Ti is a, is a good top-notch card. 
Um, it's not the it's not the latest generation. It, it's a, it's the previous generation, but it is a top notch card. Um, that, that's what I have before I before I had my forty eight Ti. I had a thirty eighty Ti. I, I just think it's great. We've seen some thirty sixties performing. Thirty sixties really work well. well as well. Yeah. Okay. But I, yeah. I haven't seen those. I, we've only had a couple of those. I I I can't really. We don't have enough data. Really, if, to, if you wanted me yeah. to stick my neck out, I'd say thirty eighty Ti. Is, is, is great. It's, it's great. Yes. I wanted to put um, you on the spot and have you stick your neck out. Yeah. Put me Would on you? the spot. I'd say get a 40, 90. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. actually I wouldn't. I'd say go for a 40, 80. The, the 40, the 40, 90 has more power consumption, but yeah. We're, I'm going to start talking to AMD here pretty mm-hmm. soon and telling them how many people were sending their way. It, yes. It's, it's a good point. Yeah. I, I've Future just never had AMD cards. So I, calling I it really into advise. existence calling it okay all right go ahead okay so the next question is from um mr bevan he from the mafia he wants to know this may have already been asked before but how do we plan on designing menus and uh for the game and and for the launcher so he asks because he feels like new games these days have have overly complicated and unintrusive menu design or perhaps it's just him getting older um, yeah, appreciates MMORPGs have a greater need for UI than other genres. Um, we've seen this. Yeah, so you're a hundred percent correct, and you know we do we play games and research to think about uh, what what ideas we might have. It's just like a chef of a restaurant is going to go try new menus out and things like that for inspiration. You know, we're checking out other games and. I completely agree with you that that the, a lot of the UI can be overly complicated. And, uh, you know, if you look at our launcher, the design yeah. of our launcher or the player account, the UI on those, Jeff has overseen that. He's excellent with that. Michael has implemented it. But what we do so far already is in all of our graphics and everything we present, we have a very meticulous eye and we pay attention to detail and we keep it as simple and clean as we can to reduce noise, confusion, and things like that. So you know almost intuitively and right away, what is the next action you need to take in this particular place? We're going to take that same philosophy or mindset uh, into the UI for the game. We don't want to overcomplicate it. We want to we make it simple and well thought through, but yet that is a challenge because our game and what we have in our vision, <clears throat> as many of you know, there's a lot. We have more in our vision than any game out there in terms of offerings for you and what we'll be able to do in the future. So that requires us to really think this through. How are we going to unfold the UI and the interactions within the game and things of that nature? But I'll tell you, the main answer to that question is we are absolutely going to try to keep it as simple as we can. We don't want to show you more than you need to see at any given point Uh, that way. It's kept simple, it's clean, it's easy. Um, Look, I'm about to go fishing. Here's the fishing UI. It's simple and clean. I need to make these three selections and boom, I can get to fishing. You know, that sort of simplicity is what we need to keep uh, our eyes on for the target. So I don't have an exact example for you at the moment, but we are gonna keep it as simple as we can. I think the fishing one's a good example. You know, when you're fishing, you only wanna see fishing related menus. Well, when you're going mining, you only want to see mining related menus. So, you know, that that's the mindset that we're going in. So you you will have all these powerful features that you see in, in, in New World and, and all these MMO, but the interface is going to be a lot cleaner and and, and more intuitive. But I mean, it, yeah. is a, it is definitely, you know, the interface can be a maker or breaker. For, for, for yeah, so it, we, it will we, guide you through what needs to be done and keep it very simple and easy and not show you information that you don't need to be looking at in that moment. Okay. Great great question. Okay. Final question from FOMAS90. In a lot of traditional games, there is often a money glitch found until it's patched. Given that a money glitch in Cornucopius would potentially mean exploiting Copia or gold, what steps are you going to make sure that this doesn't happen? It's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, You know, so, Number one, we've we've already engaged a company called Machinations that is going to help us with financial modeling around all of the in-game economy and things of that nature. That's going to help us to define exactly what we're going to have and where. Uh, so that's one thing that will 
will definitely help. We're also going to be doing a security audit to all of our endpoints. And uh, there will definitely be a, a blockchain based Web3 audit in addition to that. So before there's any real asset value of any kind at stake, we're going to make sure everything is audited and uh, and buttoned up to the best of our abilities. Um, in addition to that, uh, for example, if there's a daily amount of rewards that we're giving out um, that are associated to the best racers or race winners or uh, people that have accomplished XYZ quests or various things like that, if those rewards are limited, there's not going to be a giant reward pool sitting that can be hacked into. It's going to be a daily reward pool so that if something was to go wrong and our audit didn't catch it and our uh, Web3 uh, audit didn't catch it and whatever, and that was compromised, then only that pool would be compromised. And so we're going to be laser tied about how we implement these features because number one, we need to protect you guys to the best of our abilities. And number two, we need to protect our funds and what's connected to all of this to the best of our abilities. So that's how I would answer that. Rob, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, um, I think I think that was a pretty thorough answer. But for me, Josh, I think, I think you're spot on there. And we will okay. be doing other things as well that we can't talk about for security reasons. Absolutely, correct. Yeah. Um, We'll keep Excellent. those. Well, this this was a, a long episode. Um, thanks, Simba, for joining us today. And um, you know, we we've we've had a break for two weeks, so we'll put two length lengthy episodes together and make one long one. But yeah. um, we'll be back again next week, I think, when you should have been let out of your your um, dungeon. No, no, no. I'm still, still I, I'm here for another uh, two or three weeks. Okay. So. Uh, you might see the background behind me change a little bit if because it's a remodel that's in process. Uh, nice. And I don't know exactly what stage they're at right now. But, uh, yeah, I might I might have this background for a while. So don't judge. I'm not this judging. Is, is, not ju no, no, I'm not saying hey. you. I'm saying everybody. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah, I mean, it's early access, Josh. We've got early access to that. <laughs> this that is building. early access. <laughs> it, this fits. Is the... <laughs> it fits our law. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so good stuff. Great episode. So much to celebrate. Again, great job to you and the team. Like, I didn't feel, I felt like I missed a huge week and that was a bummer. But at the same time, I'm checking in every morning and I was just getting more and more and more excited about what's happening. Yeah. Watching everybody play in Discord and as a community. I love the community element to this that we have a group of people and we've cultivated. A, a culture that's safe for people of, of all ages. So I could get my nephew in and let him hear some of these conversations and know that, you know, hey, as a 12 year old, he's not getting exposed to anything that, that doesn't need to be exposed to. It's just fun. It's a, it's a family friendly atmosphere that we're cultivating. It's fun, even without the game to be in our discord, but now we're adding the game element and we're gamifying everything. I'm so excited. Great job to you and the team while I was out. Um, it was tough, but you guys, you guys killed it, and uh, what an amazing week! Uh, yeah, well, so much. I mean, we, we missed you, so we're definitely glad you're back. And well, um, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, let's do it all again next week. We'll do. All right, we'll see you guys soon. All bye bye. Right. See you later, everyone.